I know what you're thinking. That's so 2023. And you're absolutely right. So we'll add a little cocktail time touch to this and make Parmesan liqueur. You won't use it in an espresso martini though, but something a bit more sparkly. It will be a cocktail with sparkling wine as its main component. Something we don't see enough out there. We'll work to change that with a few episodes this year, where we'll partner up with our friends from Fiol. To start, I'll combine the crisp and refreshing effervescence of Prosecco with savory cheese and sweet chocolate notes. If you're looking for something extraordinary, stick around. It's cocktail time. So when you think of sparkly cocktails, champagne usually comes to mind, right? The original champagne cocktail was first created around the mid-1800s. It follows the classic formula with sugar and bitters, but champagne replaces the spirit and the water part. David A. Embury is pretty critical of this cocktail in his 1948 The Fine Art of Mixing Drinks. No true champagne lover would ever commit the sacrilege of polluting a real vintage champagne by dunking even plain sugar, much less bitters, in it. I'd respectfully disagree, as we made many delicious variations of this cocktail, even adding cognac, whiskey or rum, which all worked beautiful as well. But I'm here to tell you that the era of sparkling wine cocktails is here, and not just as a top of your cocktail ingredient. And they don't have to be old, classic cocktails either. Make it fun, pair it with cheese, but don't forget about the quality. Fiol collaborates with over 2,000 winemaking families around Treviso to source Glera grapes that are cultivated with the utmost respect for the land and its preservation. Their winemaker then takes care to balance the final result with the right blend of fruitiness and acidity. They say that when you pour a glass of Fiol, you're pouring a piece of Italy into your glass. The delicate bubbles, the tantalizing aromas and the balanced flavors come together to create an experience that's authentic and enchanting. Here's what I'll pair it with for today's cocktail, which I'm calling the Dr. Giovanni, because it's just what the doctor ordered. Alongside fuel, you'll also need a cheese liqueur you saw in the intro, white cacao liqueur, which you made a few months ago, pimento bitters and white pepper drops. Chocolate is for the garnish. As for the cheese liqueur, you'll see it has this nice yellow hue to it. The savory aroma leads into a cheesy, creamy and slightly salty liqueur. It's kind of hard to grasp that this is in a liquid form, it's slightly smoky because of the base we used and it pairs wonderfully with the parmesan notes. The aftertaste will linger on your tongue for a long time. I'll link videos with step-by-step -step instructions for cacao liqueur and the pimento or all spice bitters in the description. Now let's go over how to make this parmesan liqueur and the white pepper drops before we build our bubbly cocktail. To start you'll need your base spirit and some parmesan cheese. You could go with vodka for a neutral taste, but rum or scotch will give you a little extra body. I went with a combination of two malts, 4.5 ounces or 135 ml of blended scotch whisky for some fruity notes and half an ounce or 50 ml of Isla scotch for a hint of smokiness. So to 5 ounces or 150 ml of our base spirit, I'm adding 33 grams of freshly grated parmesan cheese. Avoid using powdered cheese as that contains anti-caking agents such as potato starch and powdered cellulose. Add everything into a sous vide bag. Take out as much as air possible and seal the bag with a double seal. Then cook the mixture in a sous vide bath at 65 degrees Celsius for 2 hours. As always, give the bag a mix a few times during cooking. In the meantime, I'll make some whey. In case you can't find pure whey at your local supermarket, you can just add 250 ml of full fat milk to a saucepan, bring that to a simmer and add 11 grams of 6% citric acid solution so it curdles. We did a very similar thing in the milk syrup episode. Just dissolve 6 grams of citric acid in 94 grams of warm water and that's it. To strain out the solids and end up with clear ray, I'll use a cloth filter. Back to the liqueur. Once the cheese infusion is done, cool it in cold water and refrigerate to solidify the cheese. That will make it possible to filter out the liquid through a coffee filter. I ended up with 4 ounces or 120 ml of parmesan scotch. Sorry Scotland. And for every 1 ounce or 30 ml, we need to add 12 grams of sugar and whey. So I added 48 grams of sugar and 48 grams of whey, which we made before. Mix this together with a magnetic stirrer if you already got one, or use a whisk. Whey adds richness to the liqueur, and since it's a byproduct of cheese making, it makes perfect sense to use it. If needed, you can refilter the liqueur after a few days, when it all settles. You should end up with about 200 ml of cheese liqueur. If, for some reason, you'd need more, you'll find the liqueur calculator on chemicals.com to help you get the amounts right. As for the peppercorn drops, we need just vodka and white peppercorns. 
start by crushing 5 grams of pepper with a mortar and pestle, white peppercorn will pair exceptionally with parmesan cheese and the other ingredients in the cocktail, so it will be like a spicy cherry on top. Add to a small jar and cover with 1.5 oz or 45 ml of vodka. Let this infuse for 3 to 7 days, depending on how intense you want the drops to be. I had this infusing for 4 days and I think it will be good. Filter through a rinse coffee filter and pour into a small dropper bottle. Add a small label so you'll know what's inside. Now that we have all the ingredients ready, you'll want to get them nice and cold, because the cocktail will be served without ice. In the meantime, we can take care of the garnish on the glass. For that I'll be using ruby chocolate drops, which get its natural pink color from a special variety of cocoa beans. This chocolate has a mix of fresh berry fruitiness and luscious smoothness. Grab a drop with tweezers and melt it slightly from afar, with a lighter or a small blowtorch. Then stick that on the side of the glass. You'll get this down once you make a few of them. I already garnished one before, and it's already chilling in the freezer. So we can just swap it and make the cocktail. I'll add a piece of fresh ice into the glass to chill the first ingredients a bit more. Then we'll take it out. Start with quarter of an ounce or 7.5 ml of our cheese liqueur. Next, equal amount, quarter of an ounce or 7.5 ml of white creme de cacao, or in our case, homemade white cacao liqueur. For bitters I'm adding 2 dashes of pimento bitters, but other warm spice bitters would work as well. Give this a quick stir to mix and chill the ingredients. Then take the ice cube out and add our sparkling wine. It would be hard to measure 3 ounces or 90 ml in a jigger, due to all the bubbles. What you can do is use a scale and add 90 grams, or just eyeball it. Have fun! Be a fuel. Gently mix ingredients again, then add the final touch. 3 drops of white peppercorn infusion on top of the cocktail. Salute! The cocktail has a spicy and chocolatey flavor. It's interesting how the cheese and chocolate blend together, making it hard to say which one you taste more. Fuel is still the star of the show, and that's exactly what we aimed for with this cocktail. To create richness with an ingredient that's usually elegant and subtle, without it being overshadowed. Bellissimo! With that, you've made it to the bottom of the glass. To bring the episode full circle, we'll take a look at how the Parmesan espresso martini trend started, and almost ended on national TV. The cheesy twist was first created by a Peruvian bartender Carlos Ruiz for a cocktail competition. The trend blew up a few months later, when Jordan Hughes, aka the High Proof Preacher, made a video on it and it went viral, inspired by Jordan, hosts of the Today Show on NBC, tried their own version, made with Baileys for some reason, not surprisingly, they hated it. If the cheese liqueur ends up going viral, I'm available to come and make the cocktail on the show, to give it a fair chance. Post a cheese emoji in the comments to brag that you watched until the end and subscribe for more delicious sparkling wine cocktails throughout the year. Cheers! Friends of Cocktails.